and this is our interview with Queens in Need. Ooh. Um, I mean, I, I swear it's just because you just mentioned it, but like, you know, there is a lot of, like, there are a lot of cool things to do, both involving the history of country music and outside of that, like the Frist is super dope. Um, but just, I don't know, kind of just the people are really, really kind and very, very open and... There's a good community of like yeah. musicians and stuff here where you're all really close-knit versus in other places you're not as like connected with everybody but here everyone knows everyone and we're friends and collaborate with each other so it's really cool i don't know if like i don't know if there was like a specific musical i mean i have my favorite musical <laughs> i know you do <laughs> but I, I don't know if like any one sort of impacted i think it's just musical theater and I think musical theater as a whole impacted like how we write. Just kind of the writing style yeah. of what we do, definitely. Just like the storytelling and the comedic timing and all that kind of whatnot. Yeah. All of that. We saw I would retweet. We saw Dear Evan Hansen though on Broadway, like in New yeah. York. Right before, like, the world. right before the world shut down and we cried like babies and it's been like really up at the top for me and then rent is my other favorite a bunch. i'm obsessed yeah. yeah um trixie katya um oh god like the oh my i still i have so much love in my heart for bianca del rio because i saw yeah. her in nashville at play wait one is time. that who we saw was I there that night? Yeah. No, 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 that was Sasha Valor. Oh. You saw Sasha Valor. But we're actually, it's crazy because we've all seen uh, Brooklyn Heights perform before she went on Drag Race and before she became like the host for Drag Race Canada, yeah. which is right. Well, yeah. So that's bizarre, but like we, like we love the drag scene in Nashville. Yeah. I was actually just yeah. saying that Hero 5 play and I was like rip drag shows like I really wanted to go see one. They do like drag brunches here sometimes where they can still do social distancing performances. Uh, I haven't been to one yet but I think we should go. Queen that I know that lives in Nashville is Jaden Dior Fierce. Um, yeah I've seen I, I at, at the brunch. At the brunch? I, yeah. well, or it, was, it was actually dinner but that's the same place that same they place. do it. Yeah, yeah I, I, I got to see There's a couple places perform. here that they're doing the brunches but yeah. She's incredible. I feel like country music kind of has this negative stigma around like how open and accepting it is for so for somebody to be a drag performer and a country artist and like bring people into that world and make a safe space for them is so important. And That's so cool. Yeah. God bless Trixie Mattel. <laughs> Casey, I mean, yeah, Casey, Casey Musgraves Mus is like god tier. Love that woman. Yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, we, we all kind of have like a bit of a different taste and everything. I like some classic, like I really like Lyle Lovett and so like older kind of stuff. I love Chris Stapleton. He's like my all time favorite, just like singers or like I love Jason Isbell or just like any like singer songwritery mm -hmm. like country music is like, it's my shit. <laughs> I I got on a Dolly Parton like I love that uh, kick yeah like a couple weeks ago. She's where a pretty big fan, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where I just listen to a bunch of her stuff. Dolly mm. was an icon. Is is was is <laughs> well forever. Dolly be. is an icon. <laughs> uh, for me, it was it was a lot of like classic rock. And I, I still, you know, I love the, like the drama of like Queen and like all the like performance and the energy that uh, a lot of classic rock musicians have. Mm -hmm. You listen to like One Direction. <laughs> One Direction. <laughs> Exclusively. Yeah, or like whatever your sisters had on or like pop radio or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then I, I listen to like solely country radio. But, so that's what my parents had on. So it's a big like Shania Twain, Lady Antebellum, Miranda Lambert, those kinds of people, but. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're all from this tiny town in Illinois called Quincy. Q-U-I, N-C-U-I. <laughs> Yeah, we were just bored. We were just bored and we were like, what can we do? Because we're all together. And then, yeah, I mean, when we lived back in Illinois, like we used to just like cover songs all the time. Like we play like three hour cover shows. So like covering songs is like one of our favorite pastimes. We're like, why don't we just like bring it back? Cause we'd just been writing for a while. So we're like, let's do covers again. So yeah. we just did like a couple covers that like made us happy. So yeah, the, yeah, and the process for picking the songs was really just whatever we like. Yeah, there was no moment. process. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we were just kind of like, this sounds great. Let's do mm-hmm. it. And then uh, the entire thing was produced by Savannah Santos right here. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> Happened overnight. We put up one video called F2020, and then I think that got like 5 million views. Mm-hmm. in like 12 hours and then it just kept growing from there it was so crazy yeah. yeah we had no idea what to expect we definitely did not expect that because we've been getting like 6,000 views on our tiktoks before that and then like we put this one up and we're like all right that is more than 6,000 views <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we're just, I feel like we're really lucky to be in this generation that we're in. Um, Like, so much of music is opening up and the boundaries are kind, that, you know, aren't really, like, necessary or kind of going out the window. And Mm -hmm. you do get to, like, explore more with your music and be like, okay, maybe, like, I'll do a few country songs and then maybe I'll do a few pop songs and maybe down the road we'll do, I don't know, like, death metal. I don't know, like, that's just the fun of it is, like, you get to really explore and I feel like people don't you know people listening to music nowadays really don't care about genre they just like songs and yeah individual songs so so it wasn't really a conscious decision yeah decision but it's cool that we we started out in Nashville because we'll always have like the roots of country and like the songwriting songwriting. we learned how to write songs here so yeah for sure Well, Sam discovered pop music. That probably has something to do with it. Oh, like when I was like 14. <laughs> uh, we used to just like cover a bunch of like country songs. Like we did like Dixie Chicks and like Miranda Lambert and like stuff like that. But then like when we started coming to Nashville and learning how to write songs and we started listening to like Marin Morris and like kind of like, yeah, kind of like poppy country people or like singer songwriter, kind of like Casey. And so we had like kind of those vibes for a little while. and. And then, like, I don't know. I mean, I've always loved Ariana Grande. She's my queen forever. So, <laughs> I I don't know. And then, I, I, I mean, I don't know. You guys have listened to different stuff. I think it just kind of, like, merged into, like, Sammy loves, like, singer-songwriter, like, Hosier, like, <sighs> my that, man. that kind of stuff. My and man. then Savannah's always been super into, like, R&B, mm-hmm. like, Kalani. I don't know who else. Yeah. Whatever. Stuff, stuff like that. And then, like, merging it all together just kind of, like... Yeah. happened we really yeah. yeah we write really whatever we're feeling in the yeah. moment and the production and genre usually come after to we, what we think will best suit the song itself yeah so we're we're open to everything we'll just what honestly it it's just like we have a new favorite song every week so it's like hard to <laughs> nail it down <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we were, uh, we had been on the road and on a a tour and then we were gearing up to be on a couple more for the rest of the year. And it just really like pulled the rug out from under us. And we were like, oh wait, hold on. What can we even do now? Like we, you know, we have been riding for so long. We, We were super excited for like a different phase of our career, getting to like, perform and meet people and build a fan base uh, through that. And it, it just really freaking sucked, you know, to not be able to go and do that. Yeah, we kind of just had to figure out how to still like connect with fans and like still be able to put out music and like still be, you know, 
having a career like in this time. So we had to like get on TikTok and get with the youths on there and figure out how to be cool. <laughs> but yeah, it was crazy. We just had to like figure out how to be artists again in a totally different way. I think sometimes we take art for granted yeah, in everyday life. Like art is is so I don't know, what am I trying it's, to say? It's so like it's like essential in a way that it's not like yeah. life or death necessarily, but, but for some people it is. But I mean know? it's just so deeply woven into yeah. like this is gonna sound a little cheese ball, but like what it means to be like a person and like the human experience. Like it's just so integral to that that if you to, like if you were to just like take art away and if you stop supporting artists so that no more art could be made like what would we, what would we be left with as people like i would i would be having a good time the you world would be, would be having a good boring time. it would yeah. be so boring like no walk <laughs> also imagine a world with no walk i i don't think i've ever seen savannah happier than when we were watching um the drag queen at play do black parade Oh my god. Oh, welcome. That was welcome to the wow. Yeah. I Actually, wish I could have been there that night. The night of my life. Okay. Like, yeah. like, like just the joy that you get from these things and like feeling connected to someone like with music or with art, whatever. It's yeah. just like whatever whatever that art form is and yeah. some some art can is sustainable over, you know, a period where you can't see people, but art like drag performers, musicians who make most of their living from touring, touring. like it, it's just it's important to support these people because we want to have them around we want to keep this going really good question um i think you know the aim of social media is to connect us um yeah in you know like the most beautiful thing about it is that people are able to find communities that they may not have that may not be present with the circumstances they've been born into so if somebody's you know in their small town and maybe their family doesn't have a lot of you know like love for people who are an understanding for people who are different from them they can go online and they can find those communities and sort of be brought out of you know their shame and like you know and be met with love and understanding instead of yeah just you know any sort of like hatred or shame. It's it's also really just good for educating. Like I'm learning so much about like how to like make myself a better person and educate myself more. And there's like so many people, like I've seen so many celebrities do like swipe ups, like here's like Taylor Swift just said, here's like eight ways you can register to vote. Or like, here's like a ton of ways you can like figure out like mm -hmm. um, how you can donate to certain charities or like whatever mm -hmm. and like educate yourself or here's the books you can read or whatever. Like it's just great, like informational, yeah. educational resources. Yeah. <laughs>